Okay, now we're going to do a little Q&A, and there's going to be a pop quiz, so everybody, you're ready. Uh, do you guys have any questions you'd like to ask? Um, perhaps? What are some of your influences? Some of my influences? Um, you know, I, I grew up as a, a really as a guitar player, so I loved, uh, you know, obviously, you know, Jimi Hendrix and Eric Clapton and Eddie Van Halen, and, you know, those are my, you know, like foundation music influences, and then I, you know, as I as I um, progressed, I, I grew to love, you know, different songwriters, and you know, I, I loved Peter Gabriel and Sting and the Police and Led Zeppelin and Simon and Garfunkel, and you know, mostly I'd say more the classic rock uh, were my influences, and then I got into production, so I, was, I loved Timbaland and I loved Dr. Dre and. You know, it was a whole. It was probably a progression of influences as I as I developed as a musician, as a producer. Who would you love to work with? Who would I love to work with? Um, let's see. You know, I've been really lucky to work with a lot of people that I uh, I I admire, and you know, was very you know very lucky after Let It Rock came out. I was you know writing and producing with you know everyone from you know. Lil Wayne to Rick Ross to Keith Urban to Leona Lewis. I mean, it was just like a whole variety of, of uh, artists. But um, I would love to work with probably a dream situation would be, you know, get in the studio with U2 and Jam and maybe make a record with them or, um, you know, a lot more. Yeah, you know, I'd love to get him shot day. It would just be such a, you know, she's never worked with anyone outside her circle, so that would be, you know, a different kind of lane for me, but I love I love her music as well. Kevin Rudolph doing chill out music. Chill out music. I'm very chill. I'm very chill. We're very relaxed here today in the Carolinas. Hey, Kevin, tell for those uh, younger in the crowd, tell your progression of your career. Who you, you know. Okay. Um... Progression of my career. I started out as a guitar player. I grew up in New York City, so I was, um, you know, I was playing in bands and I was, you know, just trying to find my way like everyone else. I was practicing and and um, and then I kind of thought, well, like, there's so many guitar players, I'm gonna have to like kind of take this somewhere else. So I started writing songs, you know, and I wanted to kind of be in control of my own records and everything as I was playing in bands. You know, being in a band is. It's kind of tough. It's like it's like being married to four people, and everyone has to get along and want the same thing, and you know you have to be on the same page with with you know three four other people. And I thought, man, you know, I really gotta like figure out how to do this myself, you know. So and I was lucky too because at the time technology was getting cheaper, so you could get like a keyboard and a little four track or something like that. So I started working and I started just trying to get it so that I could really make a record by myself and that's what led me into production and also led me into the hip-hop world a little bit I used to play guitar with Timbaland and do some writing and stuff like that and um, you know <clears throat> it wasn't until uh, Let It Rock came out and I signed the cash money that my career really took off the way I want but I was always writing and producing a little bit before that and then you know um, when that song came out um, you know uh, I was I was really lucky. I was suddenly in a position to work with a lot of other artists and and do what I had been working on for so long, which was really making records. At the end of the day, yeah. What was the What was the feeling like when you first heard Let It Rock on the radio? It's unbelievable. <laughs> like to hear your own song on the radio, it's like the coolest thing in the world. It literally is the coolest thing in the world. So what did you do next to, to inform someone? Disney did you text them, call them? <laughs> I, you know, you know, to tell you the truth, what you know what really happened was I was living in Miami, and um, my mom is, you know, like, I grew up in New York City, so my mom is still living in New York, and she's, oh my God, I heard it on T100, you know, and I'm like, really, I'm, I'm not hearing it all down here. I really wasn't. They weren't playing in Miami, so I was like, what? And then another friend of mine from LA called me like, yeah, it's in LA, it's in the Canoe, the countdown, whatever, Lena. You know. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, this is not, I, 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 okay, this is really happening and cool, but, you know, and it, what, it, it, so, so it, it built, but it built, it didn't build where I was like living, so I wasn't even hearing it for the longest time. So was it like, finally? 
Fine, yeah, if I'm not, I was already bored of it. I was like, ah, this thing again. No, no I'm kidding. No, no, no. It wasn't that, and it's never boring. It's the coolest thing. I actually, I did an interview with um, Billboard, I don't know, it was like a week or two ago, and um, I had co-written this, this new song that Keith Urban did called Little Bit of Everything. I don't know if you guys have heard it or not. But, um, and they said, you know, is it, is it as satisfying to hear someone else, you know, someone else do do one of your songs as it is to hear your own voice on the radio? I said, absolutely not. It's not even close. And I felt bad after I said that. I was like, oh man, they're probably gonna print that. I'm a little dick, you know. But, um, you know, it's just not. It's just so much cooler to hear your own record on the, on the radio. It just is. Not that I don't appreciate it and everything. I really do. But seriously, it's you know, your own music is. It's a whole different lane.